um, even before 1594. We'll we'll start with the um, with Bereshit bara lokim et hashemayim et haaretz, and we have the, the um, of course in the first day by bara lokim et Excuse me. By yomer lokim he or by he or, and then we have by yerev by boker yom echad. And of course, the question which is already discussed um, in the Rishonim is what is exactly being created here? Because we know, of course, that only on the, the fourth day are we going to have the, um, the sun, the moon, the stars being uh, introduced. Um, and um, what is exactly time that is being um, discussed in, the, in this point? The, the, the Ramban in source number two here um, so the um, so the Ramban in number two, so the Ramban speaks about um, uh, So basically, um, lo, lo bet, um, um, the, um, the, that the, uh, that you're, the you're, uh, you're going the wrong way. Right there. Stop. There you go. Misparstein. Um, the, um, so the, the Ramban says, Vaikra lokim loor yom, yomar ki nivra hazman vasamidat yom midat laila. So basically, the notion, what, what was created on the first day was, uh, time was created. Um, now, of course, this is even perhaps, um, and uh, I ever um, uh, mistake me physicist, but the um, of course, if uh, you know, if the if you're discussing uh, after the theory of relativity, time continuum um, that we view. Um, so that we view time uh, as being a dimension which is impacted by uh, motion, impacted by um, other uh, of the universe um, to the extent that uh, there was, and even Einstein was one of them, that uh, view to, uh, to a certain extent from our perspective of time as being an illusion. Um, the idea that God is for all of the dimensions, right? God is uh, is a, a outside of our uh, per side of all of our dimensions, um, and so um, uh, one of those dimensions that he is outside of is the dimension of time. Uh, so what is being created when we speak of universe, or if you prefer, a physical multiverse? What do you so the this is now being um, uh, what is being uh, uh, um, presented here is the um, is is the question of uh, of time and that's the or yom and the uh, the choshech laila. Um, so the this is what is being uh, created. The, the um, Rabbeinu Bachai um, is a, uh, a slightly later commentator. Um, uh, on the on Chumash, um, also working off of the Ramban, so he feels that time needs to have some kind of, um, and perhaps it does from our perspective, needs to be have some. Uh, uh, have, there has to be a uh, an entity by which, not by which that time is necessarily being recorded, but which is creating the time. Um, so he, in number three, um, so he speaks of the. Um, the um, how again before we talk of day four when we're going to have the sun and the moon to um, delineate time from a terrestrial perspective from a, from the way that we view things here on Earth. So he speaks of it. It's in the, the end of the second line in number three. So he speaks of working with medieval cosmology. So he speaks of the spheres. That's what the Galgalim are. And that the since the 
already the spheres were in motion. Uh, whether or not there is a sun, whether or not there is a moon, whether or not that sun or moon exists, but they are just simply not percep perceptible to, um, the uh, to the observer from Earth. Um, however you want to understand what happened on the fourth day, but the universe, and that's the spheres, that's the Galgal, already is in motion. And because of that, there is time. The, um, the, the Rambam um, the, in, save, in Mora Nebuchim here in number four. So the Rambam understood time to be a something which is dependent on motion. And it, again, I wouldn't claim that the, the, Ram, the Rambam um, has uh, uh, foreseen um, uh, Einsteinian physics, but basically this idea, uh, time depends on, to take a look at the second, um, the, well, we'll read the whole, the, all four lines. He then produced from nothing, the Rambam speaking about what happened on the first day, all existing things such as they are by his will and desire. Even time itself is among the things created for time depends on motion that is on an accident in things which move. When the Rambam speaks of accidents here, he's referring to Aristotelian accidents, which mean that they are properties of, of, um, of objects which are not innate to the object itself. So if I speak about, let's say the shirt that I'm wearing, uh, so the shirt is a, an, is a thing, it's an object from the perspective of Aristotle, but the blueness of my shirt is that that quality of blue, that is uh, what he would refer to as an accident. Similarly, time is an accident um, that is an motion accident of the, so it's an accident of an accident, if you will. It's a feature, what we might call a feature of, um, of object, of mass, and the things upon whose motion time depends themselves created being. Um, passed from non-existence. So this is the, a, a general, um, uh, a general, uh, I guess you could call it uh, um, an introduction to uh, the topic of the show. So, um, the idea of time um, is already very much a, well, obviously it's a feature of existence, a feature of um, um, our collective existence, everything else in the, in the, in the universe. Um, but it's also something which the Torah, in effect, is uh, speaking about the very, the question now becomes, how do we, um, uh, how do we measure that time? How do we, um, how are we able to um, gauge it uh, from a how long? Uh, the, um, here the Torah itself, but in day four, gives us the beginning of it. Um, and that is uh, here in the back to source number one um, in the in the Psukim, um, that the Torah tells us what the purpose of the sun and the moon is. And it's interesting that the Torah doesn't simply refer to the lights in the sky, the, the Ma'or Hagadol and the Ma'or Katan, to refer to them um, from a uh, cosmological perspective, which it, which it does in Pasuk Tetzayin, the sun to rule the, the day sky and the moon to rule the night sky along with the stars. Great, that is the, that's what we would expect. But then the Torah adds a, um, uh, a, the, a Pasuk actually had, had preceded it that why did God create them? So God created it for what we would expect, but also Pasuk Yudalid, the Hayu Otot Ul Mawadim Ul Yamim Vishanim. So the, the the these stellar objects are going to be used as means of delineating time. Um, and that is what is uh, referred to Mawadim Yamim Vishanim. So here we have a the the practical aspect, if you will, from a um, from the perspective, the human perspective, because um, of course um, only man, at least in terms of the creatures that were created by God, only man measures time. No other 
um, no other being, to the best of our knowledge, um, has a sense of time and time passing. Um, and God himself, um, if you will, um, lives beyond time. Again, whatever lives means in terms of the Rebona Shalom, but it the, exists beyond time, so or outside of time. So time and the measurement of time only has um, importance from the perspective of, uh, of man. And so the, um, the sun um, here on earth, so this is how we're going to be able to, uh, to measure time with the, um, the, and of course our calendar, which is a joint solar and lunar calendar um, is built upon the two, these two uh, different aspects, which are not necessarily connected. In other words, the, the months are uh, delineated solely by the moon. There's no such thing as a solar month. Um, and even the term, uh, whether it's in Hebrew, chodesh, because it's renewing itself, um, yareach, which is, of course, the moon itself, the word month from, from moon, everything is referring to the lunar cycle. When it comes, of course, to the years, the, um, the moon doesn't have any role to play in that either. But in terms of the, the seasons and in terms of our, the, um, in terms of our, the, the equinox, um, and the like, so that is uh, solely dependent uh, upon the Earth's um, revolution around the um, and rotation around the, uh, the revolution around the Sun and the rotation on the Earth's axis in terms of the um, in terms of days. So that is all uh, things that occur on the fourth day, not on the uh, not on uh, an earlier day. So time itself is created before. Our sense of time um, and our measurement of time um, becomes uh, something which is um, measured by the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the celestial objects which we see um, in the sky. Now, the question, of course, since this is as we're all familiar with, um, so the halachic time is very much bound up um, with the observation of these celestial objects. Um, if you have Shabbat, Shabbat beginning and uh, Friday night with the, the sun setting um, on Friday night and uh, ending with the sun setting again, Seita um, Kochavim, on um, Motzei Shabbat, um, our daily tefillot, um, the concept of whether it's Kriyat Shema, uh, of the shoch bechal kumecha, perhaps we can, uh, the way it's understood, meaning daytime and nighttime, um, the, um, the the korbanot and the avodah and the beit hamikdash, or if you, if you, by extension, all of our tefillot, mitzvot, which are dependent on either, that need to be accomplished either during the day or during the night, um, specific seasons, etc. All of these things are uh, based on the, uh, on the, on the, on the um, uh, on the celestial objects in the sky, whether it's the determined by um, the sun or determined by the moon, when it comes to question of determining um, dates of the month. Having said that, um, so that leads us to a question which is already dealt with um, by uh, the, the Rishonim. Interestingly, I'm not familiar with at least a direct discussion which precedes the Rishonim on this question in terms of perhaps certain hints to it which we'll, we'll get to, but that, uh, that, deal, that are found in the Gemara or the Mishnah um, or other works of Chazal. But here we'll just take as an example, um, source number five um, on the, bo the bottom of the first sheet. So, the, um, uh, so here the, the Radvaz who is writing in the 16th century um, in the, this area of the world in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean um, different places, Turkey, Egypt, etc. Um, so the Radvaz writes the following: Sa'alta mi meni odiacha daati biinyan haShabbat ki yesh chiluk gadol ben hashochnim bemizrach leshochnim bemaarav v'nimtza shema shehu leelu Shabbat havu leelu So the um, notion of time zone, um, time zones themselves. That, that we're familiar with and the um, 
the breaking up of the world into uh, longitudinal lines um, and the like, that's a much later invention. Um, well, uh, the well, longitude already had been invented by the uh, time of the Red Vaz, but sense of time zones is something that only started um, uh, in the 19th century with the um, uh, with the invention of uh, of the train system, where you needed to know exactly what time it was in distant locales. Until that point, um, it didn't really matter what the exact time was if you were a uh, if you were far away, because by the time you reached that that place. That was the time, right? You, they they set their clocks based on the observation at any given place. But still, people were well aware that um, that the um, that that there were different times in different places uh, simultaneously. And his question is just a very basic question. If you think about it, Shabbat does not last. If I were to ask the question and say how long is Shabbat, and people would answer, it's twenty four hours, twenty five hours whatever you want to say. That's not really true. It's really 48 hours. It's beginning um, at the easternmost point um, of, the, uh, of the day, wherever that time zone, wherever the international date line is, the easternmost point of that, um, of that, uh, of that day, and international date lines is another conversation. I'm not going to get to it today, but let's say somewhere in the Pacific, that's where the day now begins, okay? And it will only end when Shabbat is finished at its, the westernmost point. So let's say just on the opposite side of the international date line. So that really Shabbat on, on a global perspective, excuse me, didn't last for um, uh, 48, excuse me, 24 hours. It lasted for about 48 hours. Um, and that's his question. How is that possible? Um, um, hello? Do you hear me? Okay. I have a feeling that my... Uh, Ken, a few there. Please feel free to uh, to send them to me. I'll be happy to answer. And looking forward to seeing all of you again in person. <laughs>